In today's video, I'm going to share 15 tips for how you can improve your ACT score three, four, even five points in one week or less. Hi, my name is Matt from Prep Pros, and I'm a full-time ACT test prep tutor. I've tutored for the last 10 years. I've helped thousands of students achieve their dream test scores. I've achieved a perfect score, have helped many of my students achieve perfect scores, and I'm going to share some of my best tips, tricks, and secrets on how you can improve your ACT score fast. So if you're taking the ACT in one week or less, this video is going to really help you guys get prepared. Tip number one is take a full practice ACT. And if you can, take it in one big sitting. There's a link down below where you can download a practice ACT. So you can click on that, download the test, make sure you print off the test, and then make sure you time yourself strictly. A lot of students mistakenly at home will give themselves an extra one or two minutes to kind of finish up the sections and see how they would score. And then of course they have timing issues on test day. So take a um, print off that practice ACT, time it for real. It'll be really good practice for test day. Tip number two is know your timing. Proper time management and pacing is one of the biggest challenges students face on the ACT, especially with the added pressure and stress of testing. So make sure you memorize these timings here if you are regular time, and these timings here if you're extended time. Also, make sure you wear a watch on test day so you can keep track of time yourself and make sure you're staying on pace. The next three tips are gonna be for the ACT English section. And tip number three is learn these grammar rules. The grammars you can see on the screen right now are really quick and easy ones that you can learn in one week or less. They can really help boost your ACT English score three, four, five, even more points. So all the ones you see here, they're actually highlighted in yellow, are ones you can learn from me entirely for free in the free trials of my ultimate ACT course. There's no credit card required to sign up. Once you sign up, you will basically have videos of me teaching you the same exact lessons I teach in private tutoring sessions. You guys are gonna learn some of the most important and grammar rules you need to know for test day. Tip number four is shorter is better. So in AC English, there's two types of questions we're gonna see where you wanna make sure you pick the short answer almost every single time. The first is one like 12 where we see transition questions. Some transition questions have four transition words. When we see one like this, that has three transition words and one that is not a transition or we take it away, the answer is almost always here, J, the short one that has no transition. Of course, you wanna make sure you read for context. I always advise students, to just cross out the transition, read before and after. If you don't need that transition, which usually you don't, pick the short, simple answer. The second type of question we're gonna see, we wanna pick the short answer, are questions like 13 that test us on redundancy and conciseness. If we look at these, we see some longer answer choices, we see a shorter answer choice here, much always the short answer choice to help explain why we just want to make sure we're not being redundant and overly wordy so with this one it says summoning her strength samson plucked from the air that which was to save her and made it to shore um and earlier in the sentence it says a different soldier threw her a rope so this is a really wordy way of saying this same with b reached up from the deep water and took hold of the rope thrown by the soldier that's just redundant it already says she's reaching up and taking it and it's already thrown by the soldier and then c relied on assistance well it already says the soldier was basically there helping her. So we just wanna say our short, simple answer D. So again, these are questions that if they felt at all hard in a practice test, now that you know short and simpler is better, they will be easy points on test day. Our fifth tip is learn how which choice questions work. Which choice questions can say which choice. They also might say like we see here, given that all the choices are accurate, and then we say which one. Your only job on these questions is answer exactly what the question's asking. Now, oftentimes students overcomplicate these and think they're testing them on grammar or style or flow. None of that matters. Again, all you need to do here is answer what the ACT is asking you for. So here it says, which one offers the most logical contrast to the first part of the sentence? So all we need to do is pick the one that contrasts with the first part of the sentence. Well, the first part of the sentence here says, though the species is now safe. So we need to contrast with them being safe. So though they're now safe, the insect's famous spreading is not a contrast. The prospects seem to improve is not a contrast, that's a green. The future remains uncertain as a contrast because though they're now safe, the future is uncertain, those are opposites, and recovery is not what it's about either. So again, with these questions, students often miss these, not because they're hard, but because they're just approaching them in the wrong way. Once you know how to approach these questions in the right way and know what they're testing you on, they're much easier to get correct. Now we're gonna transition over to the math. And tip number six is make sure that you learn matrices. Now, if you're thinking, what the heck are matrices? Well, they're these guys. And if you've never seen those before, that's super common. Lots of students never learn these in school. Or some of you might be thinking, oh yeah, I learned that back in eighth grade or freshman year. But most students I work with have either never learned or forgotten how matrices work. But you need to know these because they're on every single ACT. Now, the good news is 
I'll teach you guys everything you need to know about Mage Seeds entirely for free. It's in that same free trial to my ultimate ACT course. It has videos of me teaching the entire chapter and also gives you the full download of the chapter from my ACT math book. It's got lots of practice questions. So you guys will be prepared for adding and subtracting matrices, multiplying matrices, and find the determinant of a two by two matrix, all of which are topics that can come up very consistently on the ACT. Tip number seven is know these math equations and formulas. Now the ACT math does not actually give you any equations, so you have to have them memorized for testing. And the ones you can see on the screen now are some of the most commonly tested ones that you need to know. But by no means is this going to cover you entirely. So if you want to be fully prepared for test day or get your best score ever, I would recommend going to the free trial my ultimate ACT course and downloading what you can see on the screen now, which is my full six page list of all of the equations and rules and formulas that you need to know for testing. If you know all of these, you're never going to have that feeling on test day of like, ooh, what's that equation? Or, oh, I forgot how to set that up. And it's going to help you get your best math score ever. The next three tips have to do with the ACT reading test, which is often a challenging test for students to handle in terms of time management. It's a very fast paced test. You have 35 minutes to read four long passages, each which have 10 questions each. So on average, you only have eight minutes and 45 seconds per passage, which brings me to our eighth tip, which is make sure you know how you're going to approach the ACT reading test. I always tell students there is no best way to approach ACT reading. It depends on your reading speed, your reading comprehension, your time management skills, but what I want to make sure you do is you figure out what method is best for you before you go into test day and then stick to that method on test day. If you want to learn more about some of the methods that I teach, I teach six of them. They're right here. I go through these more in depth and teach you a couple of these in my video about how to get a 36 in AC reading. So there's a link below or you can check it out up here, uh, which is going to help you learn some of those methods. Now, our eighth tip is I want you guys sometime this week to try what I like to call the nine minute drill. What the nine minute drill is, is you can print off a practice ACT grab your phone, set a timer for nine minutes, flip it over and work through a whole section. What it's gonna help you do is get a sense of how long nine minutes actually is and give you a sense of the pace. I always like to tell students, let's say you show up at track practice on day one and you go, I'm gonna go run a seven minute mile. If you've never run a seven minute mile before, it's really hard to know how fast should I be running? Am I ahead of pace coach, behind pace? So it's really, really hard to keep track without having that practice. So by doing the nine minute drill this week, you'll be able to kind of learn some of that pacing. So on test day, you'll be able to do a better job maintaining that pace and actually working your way through all four sections and managing that time well on test day. Now, our final reading tip is do not go read all the questions first. A lot of students think, oh, you know what? I'm gonna go read all the questions first. I'm gonna read the passage and I'm gonna remember as I read the passage, oh, there's a question, I'll go answer it. There's a question, I'll go answer it. It sounds great, but it doesn't really work for the vast majority of students because if you spend time reading all 10 questions over here, you're not gonna really remember all 10 of these questions. By the time you get to the eighth, ninth, 10th question, you might remember a little bit of that, but then you go back to the passage, you've kind of forgotten the questions, you're really just wasting time. So generally it's going to be better to use one of the methods where you're reading the passage first. Some students read the whole thing, some students skim it. Again, you can kind of find what works best for you, but if you've never done NASTY before, don't just go in blind and be like, you know what, I'm gonna read the questions first and go back because that method generally is not an effective one for most students. Now let's talk about the science test, which brings me to tip number 11, which is science isn't actually science. The name of science honestly is a really bad name because if you've ever done a science test, it's not actually testing you on science like you expect from biology or chemistry or physics. It is more of a reading charts and graphs quickly test. So the science is kind of the weirdo. I have to say for students, it's challenging because it's last, it's fast, it's weird. It's the last you don't test day. It's a fast paced section and mostly it's weird. So if you've never done science before, doing that practice test and doing some practice is going to be really, really important. At times you have to apply some outside knowledge uh, and scientific thinking. Yes, you do, but the majority of science is just reading charts and graphs quickly. Now, overall, science is broken down into six passages. You're gonna have five charts and graphs passages and one conflicting viewpoints passage. For those charts and graphs passages, our 12th tip is you want to go straight to the questions. A ton of students waste lots of time here trying to read and understand an entire passage like what you see in front of you now. And you might be thinking, oh my gosh, this looks really intimidating or really confusing. So we actually don't need to read any of this at first. We can just go straight to the questions and work backwards. Again, it's gonna take a little bit of practice getting used to that, but make sure you take a practice test before you use this method, go straight to the questions and then work backwards as you go through. The other important thing to know about the questions here is the questions increase in difficulty. So questions, the first two or three questions will be a little bit easier, then they go more medium, the last two questions are the most difficult, and then it repeats. So what about that one other conflicting viewpoints passage? Well, for this one, it's actually really easy to spot because the headings, as you can see here, are gonna basically say students, as you can see in this passage, or scientists, as you can see in this passage. 
So the headings give it away. You're going to see a lot more text. And when you get to this one, our 13th tip here is read this one first. So you actually want to read this entire passage. It'll feel more like a reading comp passage. So you want to sit down and read it. It's probably good to do a little bit of annotations, underline the key points of their arguments or the key differences. Some students like to write more thorough notes and then work through this. The other important tip for this one is make sure you do not save this one for last because if you skip this and save it for last, this one is the slowest. It's probably going to take you the longest to get through. So if you save it for last, you're most likely setting yourself up to potentially mess up time management, run out of time and have to rush at the very end of your science test or have to guess on some questions, which of course is going to hurt your score. Tip number 15 is have a formal study plan. Now this is more around not just what you can do this week, but also long term to get your best ACT score ever. Because if you're just starting your prep right now and you're taking your ACT in a week or two, you're probably not going to be set up for your ultimate success and your best score ever. So long term, well, what should we do? Well, over the next week or so, at least start by writing down a plan. Write down when you're going to do your practice test, when you're going to review it, maybe set aside time to try and learn some of those grammar rules, those math formulas, do any additional practice for reading and for science. So again, make that formal plan. But overall, if you really want to get ready, I usually tell students you probably want somewhere between three and six months to prep. And you want to make sure you're prepping consistently. So whether you get a private tutor or do a group class, those are great. But I know a lot of students and families can't afford that, which is why I created my ultimate ACT course. So in the ultimate ACT course, it has structured study plans, but more importantly, it has all the same videos, lessons, and materials that I teach in private tutoring sessions, which are normally 225 bucks an hour. It has it gives you access to all that stuff for just $99 a month. So there's over 70 hours of videos. You get uh, copies of my ACT English book, my reading book, my science book. The only thing you have to order separately is that math book. Uh, and then it has videos of me teaching you everything, literally all the same lessons I teach in private tutoring. So it is a super thorough way that you can kind of get through all the prep at your own pace for a really reasonable um, and honestly a very, very low price compared to any other test prep that you guys are being offered. So if you do that, there's also study plans in there that are easy to follow. You can follow if you're trying to cram and do it in six weeks, I got a six week study plan for you. If you're going to do it over two or three months, we have study plans for that. So it makes it a really easy way that you can have a similar experience of working with a private tutor like me, but doing it at a much lower price point. So of course, all that um, doesn't negate those tips I gave you. So if you're still taking the test in a week, all those tips I gave you in the start and the rest of this video are still going to really help you guys boost your score. Everything I focused on in this video are the uh, basically the easiest things to learn, the fastest way that you guys can improve your scores. If you guys want to learn more about ACT prep, definitely watch more of my videos. There's more stuff with the uh, the math videos, the English videos, the reading, the science that can also help boost your score quickly. Of course, take that practice test. That is the biggest thing that I would say to make sure you do this week. And then of course, study those mistakes. You can use your practice test and the mistakes you make there to help guide what you should be focusing on this week as you get better. Of course, as you're preparing, if you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments below. I always take time to respond to you guys. Um, beyond that, uh, please like, subscribe. Uh, there's always new videos coming out. Happy to help you guys again prepare for your best ACT scores ever. Other than that, this is Matt at Prep Pros signing off. I'll see you guys next time.